you're a Ben 10 fan, you probably found yourself playing a Ben 10 video game at one point or another. Well, not me. I was a lot more into the toys than the actual stories themselves, but clearly the game sold to a few people, so I think it's fair to say that I'm in the minority when it comes to that. Depending on how you look at it, there have been 10 Ben 10 video games to date, so why don't we rank them from worst to best, shall we? Why would you pay money for a ripoff of Mario Kart in Ben 10 form? I mean, maybe it is kind of cool to see the aliens racing each other in cars, even aliens who you think with your advertised cranium would need cars, like, I don't know, the one who runs fast, but anyway, there's really nothing offered here you wouldn't get with every other racing kart game out there. Trying to appeal with the popularity of Ben 10, as well as this format, and also the simplicity of creating a game like this, planted deep at the bottom of this list. Similarly, we got freaking Subway Surfers. Seriously, what the hell? I was actually expecting some kind of story with this, but it's literally just Subway Surfers with Ben 10. I mean, who the hell thought of this? It's like, yeah, we have this idea for a Ben 10 game. You know, the show where the kid transforms into aliens. Yeah, what do you have for me? So basically, we take Ben and all his aliens, and we... Yes? Yes? Make it into Subway Surfers ripoff. You're fired. Wait, hold on a minute. That could actually make me a lot of money. I'll take your entire stock. Was this game unfinished or something? It just screams lazy with every frame, to be honest. The cutscenes are told through stuck photos of the character standing nonchalantly as exposition is explained, and the overall presentation feels amateur and almost ironically bad. The visuals of this game itself are also kind of lazy, and it's often hard to see the characters because they're too small or at a weird angle. To be honest, I never played this one myself and I don't know if it's even available anymore, but yeah, not a good one at all. I feel like I could've created a better video game in Windows Movie Maker for God's sake. It's kind of sad for Rise of Hex that it was ranked even lower than this atrocity. I mean, to be fair, the Ben 10 Hyperscan was released in 2006, as I'm pretty sure the very first Ben 10 game. At least among four other games in the horribly unsuccessful Hyperscan system, which, similarly to a lot of 2010's games you may remember, had the sensor that you could scan alien cards on to transform. Kind of like Skylanders or whatever. I can actually see myself enjoying this concept, aside from the fact that it would cost more than $100 to collect all the cards, and these were sold in a randomized bundles alongside with Kevin and other other lame villains, rather than actual aliens you'd want to collect. Other than all of this madness, the game itself looks dated as hell, and was probably really frustrating to play, because I've heard the game occasionally didn't give you the alien that you had the card to, which just presents a whole new bundle of issues. Other than all this, the game has been lost to obscurity, and although you may have heard me talk about it in my Bent and Iceberg video, I've never played this one for obvious reasons, and I can't imagine any of you have either, unless you seriously grew up with the system. What a weird twist though, that this was the first Ben 10 game? The first Alien Force game to be released was this one, based on the first two seasons of the show. In regards to that, it does a fine job establishing the being aliens, Volcanus' minions, and the Forever Knights, but unfortunately ignores all the other villains we see so far. The game is a bit too short from what I've seen on the YouTube walkthroughs, honestly I haven't played this one myself, but for what it was made to do, it's decent. Not fantastic, but decent. The visuals could use a lot of work, and they will be polished up a bit more with some future games, but here it just feels a bit mediocre to be honest. Um, you know valuable for research and stuff. This game also allows you to play as Kevin and Gwen, and pretty much forces you to in order to get through certain levels. I feel like everyone just loathed these parts because you'd rather be fighting with Swampfire Humongousaur rather than the Metal Dude, so I guess the solution here would have been to shorten these segments, but alas, they are spurs throughout the game, and you're forced to play them if you want to get back to Ben. <laughs> Everyone I've heard talk about this game say the same thing though, which is it takes forever to move on to the next level, because they throw street fighters at you every two seconds, and you can't progress until you take all of them out. This game also doesn't include all the aliens, so there's some improvements to be made there as well. I've heard really good things about this one, and I can't really say I've played it myself. It looks really promising. It seems like a lot of fun to play multiplayer, although one person has to play as Rook, which I imagine isn't as fun, but other than that, it comes off as a very chill game that has the most casual sense to play with. There's no overlooming exposition or cast of aliens, they literally throw 13 random ass aliens together from the Plastic Series and Omniverse, including Earth Iguana, Heat Blast, Wild Vine, and Blocks. We all pick these. While the visuals aren't terrible, they look a bit too lazy in the background department, and the camera isn't really fixed to anything, so it's always moving a bit too much to take it seriously. Seriously, or it's at a weird angle that's too far from the action. The characters also have that weird SpongeBob and Tehran 2D 3D look, which I just hate, I'm sorry. I've heard it takes a lot of gameplay inspiration from Protector of Earth, and I mean, teach his own, but generally, this one doesn't succeed as much as that one does, and other than probably being the most lighthearted and action focused game so far, it really doesn't offer anything to particularly take away remembering, or even any decent eye candy to take away from it, leaving it just kinda mediocre. Also, why did you make me look 
the forearms crossing his bottom arms. Look. Another one I've actually played, I hate to admit, but actually isn't half bad. I'm not a fan of the reboot generally, so I had an inherent bias playing this one, but the gameplay is actually really good. Like other games on the list, Hex is a villain here, actually the main boss, and the game is structured as a long mission with side quests to finally defeat Hex. While I don't like this bright colorful color scheme for obvious reasons, the visuals here are actually stunning, and easily the best on this list. I mean, in some cases, this game had like 12 years head start on some of these previous ones, but yeah. The aliens, the characters, the environment, the fluidity, all beautiful to look at. The music isn't really my my favorite, and again, the story in this one wasn't super engaging to my edgy Alien Force eyes, but it did a good job emulating the reboot as well as it could have, and creating a fun game for newer Ben 10 fans. Probably the most famous Ben 10 game out there is Protector of Earth. This one is just so classic and probably has the greatest storyline in here. Almost every villain in this show is given a place to shine, and it's a completely original story we're given, nothing carried from the show. It's supposed to take place between seasons 3 and 4 in the show, and I honestly don't know how much of this crap is canon, but I personally wouldn't mind considering his plot to be canon. The visuals, while being pretty good for 2007, are a bit dated now, especially with the close-up cutscenes and the character moments. The actual gameplay is really smooth and offers versatile combat abilities, while also balancing a good amount of aliens in the mix. While it may have been nicer if we got more than the few aliens we got, I think it made us appreciate them more and focus on them rather than have the opportunity to switch every two seconds and not utilize each one effectively. The voice acting here is awesome, and this one is obviously really viewed by the community, including me. As usual with the original series also, is that this game has impeccable sound design, unlike later versions that are either silent or just blasting music. This one has sound effects wherever it can, and it can improve a scene immensely, and add tones that otherwise would be absent. While it is high on my list, I still have gripes with it, like the outdated visuals and the cliche story times, with the Omnitrix failing like every other Benton classic episode. Despite this, I don't want to be too negative about this one and risk grinding a few deep cut Benton fans gears. I still love this game and regard it as my number three. <laughs> Damn, we got a lot to talk about with this one. Let's start with the story. The exposition given here is among my favorites because it's really original. There's an evil Waybig coming to Earth, and Ben has to stop him with Waybig, but he needs a device called the Portis Altiare, which is an extension of the Ultimatrix that you can get from traveling to a few awesome locations throughout the world. This includes Japan and China. Dude, any game or movie with Japan as a location is an instant win in my book. This evil Tokusaro concept comes back in Omniverse, and it's honestly so cool. Speaking of the aliens, now we have all these aliens with the additional five Andromeda aliens, and the good Ultimate Aliens. I say this because they excluded Ultimate Cannonbolt. <laughs> so base. They actually put Wrath and Forearms behind a paywall, meaning you got one alien depending on if you got the Xbox or PS3 version of the game. Kind of a scummy thing to add to an otherwise awesome game, but whatever. I'm not personally a big fan of the more puzzle-based orientation of it, but the boss fights are cool as hell, and we got a ton of classic and new villains here, so it more than makes up for it. Don't make me come down there and do your fighting for you. Shut up, Kevin. I'm so glad that the final way big fight was actually playable and not a cutscene, unlike the Alien Force games, because that means you can actually beat the evil to Kusar by yourself, who, by the way, surprise of all surprises, turns out to be Albedo, but yeah. Everyone talks about that badass final boss fight, and they're not wrong. It is awesome. I am so glad they came up with this original rather than bringing back Vilgax or whatever, because it definitely made this unique. The visuals here are also awesome, not just the aliens looking amazing, but even the characters, who look like their Alien Force game counterparts, but a lot more polished and clean looking, as well as animated. Obviously, the human characters will always be a level below the alien designs, and I get that, but here, they pulled it off pretty well. Also, dude, look at that poster art. Jeez. The music here is also among the best of the Ben 10 soundtracks, and you may have heard me include their tracks in a lot of previous videos. There's a reason for this, because it is awesome. So yeah, awesome gameplay, awesome aliens, awesome visuals, awesome story, awesome music. Just a bit of scummy decisions when it comes to the paywall, and having a bit too many puzzles to solve rather than bad guys to punch for my liking. This one is one of my favorites. This may be a hot take, and it may be my alien next simping side coming out, but I absolutely adore this game. I think it deserves number one. The visuals for starters are incredible. A huge improvement from the first Alien Force game, with high quality animation in the cutscenes and character monologue. I just love this CG look for Ben, honestly. I wish we got a feature length CG movie with the Alien Force gang so bad. The only weird looking one I'll say was Gwen. She looked a bit deformed and droopy at parts. Also, Vilgax was a bit. Uh... Isn't Ben Tess and his loyal lackeys? It's been a long time since you've been in my life. Voice acting here is awesome, with great story, not to mention being based on the third and worst season of Alien Force, so I'm just grateful this characterization came out better than the actual show at this stage. The Alien X cutscene is absolutely awesome, and looking back, I kind of regret not including it in my Alien X video. I do wish it was a bit longer because I adore this design of Alien X, especially with the 3 look of Bellicus and Serena, but it was totally too fast for no reason and made it feel a bit rushed. Timing is everything. 
Yes, yeah, so maybe have a little better timing. The writing is riveting and the inclusion of Billy Ox was cleverly handled. Probably the best part of it though was the fact that you could switch between all 10 aliens at will now with no weird Skylander stuff or having to unlock them through hours of gameplay. I do like how each alien gets their own little quirk as well, like, like how Cannonbolt gets his bouncing random combo, Goop can hop walls and such, Brainstorm can hack computers. It all just makes this game feel a lot more fun if you know how to control it properly. Yoink. Well, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe with notifications on to support me. Be sure to tell me your favorite or least favorite Ben 10 game in the comments down below, and check out my plethora of other Ben 10 videos if you like this one. Once again, thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers, I love you all very much, and got a lot more Ben 10 content on the plate coming up soon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you beautiful ladies and jellyfish next time. Shalom!